Britain's Day, November 27, Rejecting the Source of Life Some of the saddest accounts in all of Scripture occur in the Gospel of John. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. The light was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. That's John 1, verses 5, 10, and 11. The I Am was rejected by many of his own people. No wonder Paul later warns in Hebrews 10.35, Do not cast away your confidence. As we have seen again and again, Christ was rejected because people did not accept his word. Edward Zinke and Roland Hegstad uh, write in the book The Certainty of the Second Coming, published by the Review and Herald Publishing Association, page 96, the contemporary humanistic way of thinking begins with doubt. People question everything in order to determine what is truth. That which survives the fire of cross-examination they accept as rock-solid knowledge, something on which to place one's faith. Some apply the same method to the Bible, calling everything into question from a scientific, historical, psychological, philosophical, archaeological or geological perspective in order to determine what is truth in the Bible. The very method itself starts with and builds upon doubt in the veracity of the Scripture. Christ asked, When the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? In Luke 18, verse 8, end of quote. Read Numbers, chapter 13, verses 23 to 33. What made the difference between the two reports the spies brought back about Canaan? So we turn to Numbers, chapter 13, and we'll begin with verse 23. When they reached the valley of Eshcol, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on a pole between them, along with some pomegranates and figs. That place was called the Valley of Eschol because of the cluster of grapes the Israelites cut off there. At the end of forty days they returned from exploring the land. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us. It does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev, the Hittites, Jebusites and Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack these people, they are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, The land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there. The descendants of Anak come from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. The sin of the Hebrews, when they were at Kadesh Barnea, was to doubt the word of God. God had asked them to go up and take the land. Twelve spies were sent to Canaan to spy out the land. They came back with two reports. The majority gave a negative report. There are giants in the land, walled cities, weapons we have never seen before, and well-trained armies. By contrast, we have been slaves in the land of Egypt with little military experience. Ten spies voted no, based upon the overwhelming evidence from a human standpoint. Two spies voted yes, based upon their faith in the overwhelming power of the word of God. And so to finish the day, 
How do we avoid making the same kind of mistake made here? And yet, how do we also avoid presumption, doing something foolish but believing that we are doing God's will and therefore cannot fail? Wednesday, November 27. Rejecting the Source of Life When Christ was upon this earth, the people flocked to hear him. So simple and plain were his words that the most unlearned among the people could understand him, and his hearers listened as if spellbound. This enraged the scribes and Pharisees. They were filled with envy because the people listened so attentively to the words of this new teacher. They determined to break his hold upon the multitudes. They began by attacking his character, saying that he was born in sin, and that he cast out devils through the prince of the devils. Thus were fulfilled the words, They hated me without a cause. John chapter 15 verse 25, compared to Psalm 69 verse 4. The Jewish leaders maligned and persecuted the one who is chiefest among ten thousand and altogether lovely. The Upward Look, page 325. This is a time when the question with all propriety may be asked, When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Luke chapter 18 verse 8. Spiritual darkness has covered the earth and gross darkness the people. There are in many churches skepticism and infidelity in the interpretation of the scriptures. Many, very many, are questioning the verity and truth of the scriptures. Human reasoning and the imaginings of the human heart are undermining the inspiration of the word of God and that which should be received as granted is surrounded with a cloud of mysticism. Nothing stands out in clear and distinct lines upon rock bottom. This is one of the marked signs of the last days. Selected Messages, Book 1, page 15 Caleb and Joshua, the two who, of all the twelve spies, trusted in the word of God, rent their clothes in distress when they perceived that these unfavorable reports had discouraged the whole camp. They endeavored to reason with them, but the congregation were filled with madness and disappointment and refused to listen to these two men. Finally, Caleb urged his way to the front, and his clear, ringing voice was heard above all the clamor of the multitude. He opposed the cowardly views of his fellow spies, which had weakened the faith and courage of all Israel. He spoke of the land he had visited. Said he, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But as he spoke, the unfaithful spies interrupted him, crying, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. These men, starting upon a wrong course, set their hearts against God, against Moses and Aaron, and against Caleb and Joshua. Every step they advanced in this wrong direction made them firmer in their design to discourage every attempt to possess the land of Canaan. They distorted the truth in order to carry their baneful purpose. When men in responsible positions yield their hearts to unbelief, there are no bounds to the advance they will make in evil. Few realize when they start upon this dangerous course the length that Satan will lead them. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, pages 149 and 150. And remember, God is always faithful.